welcome to another edition of CCK Live. My name is Emma Peterson, and today I'm joined by Michelle DeTori and Brandon Paiva, and we're going to be talking to you about the newly established VA presumptions for burn pit exposure and for veterans that were exposed to burn pits. So, military burn pits are large areas of land where the military and its contractors incinerated all waste by military bases, including plastics, medical waste, rubber, human waste, and other materials. Burn pits were standard uh, part of the U.S. military's waste disposal protocol in places such as Iraq and Afghanistan in the post-9-11 era during operations Iraqi and Enduring Freedom. Burn pits are dangerous due to the nature of the products being incinerated. The process of igniting waste in an open-air burn pit produces toxins, <clears throat> more toxins burning waste than in a controlled environment, such as an incinerator. Additionally, toxic smoke from these pits gets carried for miles, impacting those serving on and around military bases. Specifically, burn pits emitted the following pollutants, particulate matter, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PHAs, volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, toxic organic halogenated dioxins and furons, including TCDD, one of the major toxins in Agent Orange. So Michelle, can you tell us a little bit more about burn pit exposure and the new VA presumptions associated with those exposures? So until recently, most burn pit cases were a case-by-case -case basis, and you usually needed a very good medical opinion linking your medical condition to your exposure to burn pits. It was usually a very lengthy process, and it was just very difficult to get service connection. However, in August 2021, VA announced that claims for three respiratory conditions, chronic asthma, rhinitis, and cyanitis, were starting to be processed on a presumptive basis. So they were linking this to particulate matter, um, and it extended to veterans diagnosed with chronic asthma, rhinitis, and cyanitis within 10 years of a qualifying period of service in Southwest Asia and certain other areas. A portion of the particulate matter population pollution was produced by burn pits, and which is evident in the toxic chemicals found at the Joint Base in Balad and other military bases in Southwest Asia theater of operation. What's interesting is um, Balad, I never realized until once looking up, it's actually 20 acres when it was usually at its full capacity. So it's 20 acres of burning various toxins. Um, so it's a very large burn pit. You can see kind of where the um, exposure is coming from. So adding another layer to this was the PACT Act. So that's the promise to address comprehensive toxins, which was officially signed into law on August 10th, 2022. So this is recent. It included an additional 23 conditions for presumptive service connection, and it is listed for this toxic exposure. So I won't read all 23 conditions to you to bore you, but um, it's various cancers and respiratory conditions. And keep in mind, just because these are the presumptive conditions, it doesn't mean that other conditions aren't necessarily applicable. It's just the criteria for service connection would be slightly different. And we'll have a list of all of those um, conditions available on our blog. So please be sure to check out the link below if you want to do some more reading about those conditions. Um, Brandon, can you tell us more about who's covered under these new presumptions? Who's going to get the benefit of, of these burn pit presumptions? Absolutely. So that new list of 23 conditions um, is sort of speaking to covered veterans. The bill defines a covered veteran as one of the following. A covered veteran is a veteran who, on or after August 2nd, 1990, performed active military, naval, or air service while assigned to a duty station in and also including the airspace above Bahrain, Iraq, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Somalia, and United Arab Emirates or UAE as well. Now, secondly, a veteran who on or after September 11th, 2001 performed active military, naval, or airspace service while assigned to a duty station, including the airspace above the following locations, Afghanistan, Djibouti, Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, and Syria also fall under the category of a covered veteran. Now, these are all effective August 10th of 2022. However, just because this has taken effect in August of this year, say you have a pre-existing claim that has already been contested or you've been 
you know, in the appeal stage since prior to August of 2022, this doesn't mean that you should abandon your claim at this point, just because these have only been added effective January 10th of 2002. We would typically encourage you to kind of keep that still on appeal and still pursue those cases. Just because you have a case that pre-exists that date doesn't mean that you may not still be eligible for some or all of these benefits. Absolutely. And I think that's a really important point that it's going to be effective the date this, this bill was signed into law. Originally, there was a planned rollout, a phase in of different presumptions, but the president and VA announced that all of these 23 conditions were going to be um, presumptive, effective the date um, the bill was signed into law. So it's really great news for veterans out there who've been suffering for a long time um, from these conditions. So um, if you think you were exposed to burn pits, you know you were bone to, exposed to burn pits, and you want to seek service connection for one of these 23 conditions, how should you go about doing that? Um, you're going to want to fill out a VA Form 21526EZ if you need to file a new claim. Um, same form that's used for all other initial claims. And in addition to these new presumptive conditions, um, uh, well, the addition of these new presumptive conditions, it's going to make it easier for veterans to get these conditions service connected. You're no longer going to need to provide that nexus um, or link. The presumption will cover that part of service connection for you as long as you meet all the other eligibility requirements. Um, and this new, this new presumption um, really impacts numerous veterans and their family members who might be seeking survivor's benefits. So for more information on the PACT Act, burn pits and toxic exposure, please visit our blog at cck-law.com um, slash blog. Please be sure to check out our other YouTube videos and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Um, Michelle, Brandon, any closing thoughts? I think like I always say in these videos, if you've been exposed to these conditions, file the claim sooner rather than later because it might go back to the original date of claim. So if you believe that you should be entitled to these benefits, you're better off filing sooner rather than later. Yeah, I would just echo that we oftentimes see the effective dates get a little washy. So if you're not sure if the effective date that you're being assigned is correct, um, you know, appeal or, you know, reach out to an accredited representative or VSO um, to see assistance with looking into whether or not it's correct. Great. Thank you both. And thanks to all of you out there for tuning in.